Welcome to the Worm Expert. Today's edition we want to discuss the difference between basic four types of composting worms. Three are usually raised within a uh, compost bin. Uh, the latter is going to be one that is outside. It's not a good uh, worm to raise in a composting bin. It's good in the clay and sandy soil, but we'll get more into him later. First, I wanted to give you a an idea of the different sizes and what these worms actually look like side by side. If you notice up top, first you have your red wiggler, basically about a two to three inch worm that most people will claim is the best, but we'll get into that a little later. But that's your your biggest flavor as far as composting worms go today. Your next one down usually grows anywhere from about three to five inches, which is known as your European night crawler. It's a good fishing worm. Compost, it's okay there. Your next one is basically uh, your exterior type composting worm, known as the Alabama jumper. Now, these things will grow up to about 10 inches. That's about a mediocre size one in the picture. The last one at the bottom of the picture is your African nightcrawler. Now, I might be a little biased, but that's my favorite worm right there. But I'll get more into that as we progress into this video. first type of worm I'd like to discuss with you is the red wiggler worm. Uh, basically they grow to two to three inches. Most people will say these are the best uh, composting worm for your worm bin. However, a lot of these people uh, either either don't raise red wigglers or haven't raised other worms to compare them with. Um, other farmers that I have spoke with that have compared them with other worms agree with me. They are an excellent composting worm for your worm bin. However, the African Nightcrawler, which I'll get into a little later, is actually a little better worm. Um, these worms can be fed you know, like normal, your, your food scraps as far as your greens and all. Um, they're very prolific, basically uh, good temperature range, somewhere about 68 to 72 is a nice temperature range. It's another reason a lot of people might like to raise them if they're raising them with inside their home. Uh, it's usually a standard comfort zone. The second type of worm I'd like to discuss, which is about a three to five inch long worm, is your African, uh, is your European nightcrawler, excuse me. European nightcrawler, uh, one is a, a favorite by fishermen. Um, two is a composting worm. It's, it's not your, your best composting worm, but it is very sufficient. Um, so if you're into fishing and uh, gardening and fishing is your, your main line, you, you might want to look at these worms. Um, again, they're, they're about a three to five inch worm. They do get as thick as a pencil if you do feed them some grain. Um, very hardy little worm. The next one is your African Nightcrawler. Now this is my favorite. Now I raise a variety of worms. I do get to see the difference. One, the castings are a, a lot fluffier. There is no difference in the potency or the pH balance of their, their ca castings. Um, it's just a neater, lighter, fluffier casting. Um, but the main thing I've noticed comparing them to the red wigglers is the African nightcrawler actually will eat more. Um, it's very prolific. Um, it does like a warmer temperature. Basically, you, you want more like a 75 to 80 degree range. Um, but it does have a dual purpose also. Uh, it's an excellent fishing worm. Um, it's more heat tolerant than your other worms, so especially in uh, the warm summertime when the water's warmer. Uh, that, they're basically up to about 10 inch worms, so I mean, you can't ask for more. It does a nice, basically, uh, what people try to imitate with a Texas rig uh, for bass fishing and such. Basically, this worm will do, and it's a live worm. Um, the last one is the Alabama Jumper. Now this guy is not one you want to raise in a worm bin. They'll be running all over the place. They're also uh, don't eat the same diet as far as uh, vegetable scraps and all. They're more carbon based. Basically you put them out in a pile. They survive very well um, with their durable skin. You might notice from the image some of the, the outer rings are uh, protruding more than the other worms and they actually feel a lot different. You can feel the toughness in the skin compared to the other worms. That enables them to burrow through the clay and the, and the sandy soils. But again, it's more of a carbon base. You want hay, not straw. Leaves are fine. Um, keep away from oak leaves, just like you would with all your worms, really. Um, 
you, you want to use maybe more like a maple birch things like that um, cardboard shredded up shredded newspaper but you don't want to be adding your food scraps to this pile They're, they will not eat it and actually you could actually eventually um, with the wrong combination chase them out of the pile the reason you want them in a pile and not scatter them all over is let them build a in a little area where they can um, basically lay their cocoons and eventually they'll spread out on their own if you start spreading them out too far they'll have a hard time locating one another as far as mating and hence eventually you'll have no worms in your yard if you leave a pile or two maybe 500 to a thousand in each pile at least eventually they'll scatter throughout your yard I've done this and about maybe a hundred feet away you see them in the garden um, they'll actually come across the top of the soil 10 inches long and look like a snake slithering right across but that's it I just wanted to give you an idea since I hadn't seen anything online as far as a comparison of the different types of red worms uh, and composting worms out there and let you visualize the size difference and a little bit of the color difference I'm not a professional photographer or video person I do my own programming web design I'm a do-it-y'all type of guy I do my own farming but um, I hope this helps and you have a great day and um, we'll be getting on to another video here probably next week so uh, stay tuned have a good day thank you